And welcome back to Contemporary Black Voices, where our topic mm -hmm. today is AI and the Black community. Now, we had a really interesting uh, short segment where, we're, where we ended with the mm -hmm. question of what can we do to address this racial bias within, you know, of, uh, within in the programming of, uh, in the algorithms. One of the things I think we have to keep in mind here also is the diversity and uh, equity and inclusion component mm -hmm. where uh, a lot of organizations have removed themselves from the remove DEI from their uh, uh, their programming. So now, how do we access those organizations to where there's more diversity, to where questions of uh, minimizing the bias in AI is, is, a, is a big concern also. Mm -hmm. So it all plays in. So what did mm -hmm. you have to say on that? No, and, and, and no, I agree. And there, there definitely needs to be diversity in AI and, and programming. And, and you really have to start early. You have to start the kids, you know what I mean? Don't toss them a football. Toss them, you know what I mean? Get, take them to the library. Let them get on the computers. Get them interested in programming early. You know what I mean? You start at the earliest ages and you get them interested in that. And that's how you foster a, a future generation of, of, of African-American AI programmers. You bring up a very good point. Um, you know, the first thing that I would like to say is that if you had a black programmer mm -hmm. and if they wanted to really include diversity, equity, and inclusion, that black programmer would be in position to make a lot of money because he could represent or she could represent being able to program uh, or add to the AI uh, the black component or the ethnic component. Mm -hmm. However, in this uh, world that we have right now, where DEI is trying to be excluded, mm -hmm. the question is going to have to become, is it being excluded in AI because of what government and evangelical Christians want? Mm -hmm. Or is it just that they don't have somebody to do the job? Right. So it, it, this stacks up a lot of uh, questions mm -hmm. as to how we get to this. Right. But we better figure it out quicker than later because once this thing gets down the, the road, I think it's going to be very or much more difficult to try to correct than, than we have right now. No, I, you know, I think in, the, like in education, especially special education, where they're sitting around those tables doing what they call individual education plans for, mm -hmm. for, for a student in need, and how AI is being used to determine how to build those plans, how, and, and, and then how to track that student from where they are through the, through the special education system. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm thinking about a child that was in my room who had some developmental issues, not because he couldn't do it, but because of the environment that he was in. This was a child who spent his night under the bed mm. to get, you know, to, to, so he wasn't, you know, a victim of drive-by shootings. And then he would come into school the next day and take about a 30 minute nap. And I would allow him to take a nap so that he could function. And his mother had him on Adderall, uh, high levels of Adderall when he came to school. So that type of information can get into the AI system, you know, if the privacy of that, of that student is not protected. And so parents, and, I, and I've been saying this, if you don't know about the education system, especially special education, and you go to these meetings, it will behoove you to take in an advocate who knows the system, who can question the output, the output of any record that's being spoke about on your child. Because if, if there's any AI involved, there could be some bias against that child. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, my, again, my son, my son, the only reason why he was in special ed for six months is because he figured out that there was a reduction of the required work. And so he figured, let me just pretend I don't know anything so he can get into that system. But once I cracked that code, and it was probably less than six months, I said, take him out. If he needs to fail, you fail him. But he does not need to be in special education. But some parents don't know that. And so 
it will behoove again, parents, if you don't know, it's okay to not know, but you find people who do know mm -hmm. to help navigate those systems, especially with AI in the play. Mm -hmm. Here's so part. you Go touched ahead. on two things. One, uh, advocacy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing that you touched on uh, was uh, privacy, information. And so those two things, uh, one, we definitely need to be vocal. And one of the things that we can do is make sure that we uh, contact our representatives in, in, in Congress uh, and make sure uh, that our information is protected and, and how we need to make sure that we pass laws about how AI is being used. But you're talking about which, old days now. Which, which no, but, and this is important, how AI is being used because AI can be used in nefarious ways, which touches on the second point, which is information uh, and, and privacy. And so this is one of my greatest fear, okay, is because... AI is, 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 is a system, you know what I mean? It's a bunch of, of computers talking to each other, right? It's, 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 it's this entire sphere out there. And so when you go on there and you, you Google lawnmowers and then you go and next thing you know, you have 10,000 ads for lawnmowers and weed eaters and stuff like that. And those are those systems. And so you say, okay, well, I Googled this on Yahoo. So why would I go to Amazon? Am I still getting the advertisement for weed eaters and lime? You know what I mean? So those systems are talking to each other. And so my fear is this, so, because it, it, it takes not only what you Google and look up, but also your, 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 what, what you post when you're looking for a job, mm -hmm. what you post on LinkedIn, you know what I mean? What you post on your social media pages. And it takes all that information. You know what I mean? So if, if AI sees that I Googled koopy hats on Kwanzaa, you know what I mean? <laughs> or it shows that my LinkedIn profile says I graduated from Morehouse or, or Howard or Hampton. You know what I mean? Automatically know you're black. They know I'm black. Right. And if they know the demographics, they, they, they see my zip code and they know the demographics of my neighborhood, right? So what's to say that they now have this profile of me and when I go to submit my, my job application, they already have everything. They it's have. already ruled out. My so, job application gets kicked out because they know I'm black. And, and I agree with and that. We need to guard against that. And I, I, I agree 100%. Um, the thing that I wanted to say is whenever AI is used, especially in the justice system, mm -hmm. it should be disclosed. Mm -hmm. However, I'm speaking on a certain degree old model because mm -hmm. this new Trump administration that comes in ain't going to give a damn about us saying whatever, and if they can use things to indicate that the person is black for elimination purposes, <laughs> they definitely may want to do that. That's why when I said we're talking about an old system, right? you know, in the old system, yes, I think that we could call our congressperson mm -hmm. and advocate, yes, we want, especially in the judicial system, mm -hmm. because if you go to a judge and a judge says, okay, I'm going to give you your sentencing, uh, you know, in, in two days or whatever. But the judge puts in there in the AI or whatever, mm -hmm. and you come back with this, and you actually have an inherent bias in that. It almost goes back to the old days when we were talking about, like, uh, the Jim Crow or somebody who made a judgment based off of false facts, mm -hmm. okay? And we don't find out about that until... 10 or 20 years later on down the road, mm -hmm. and it might be after the guy got sentenced to the electric chair, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, but you right, find yeah. out about it. So I think it's very important that we know that AI is being used, mm -hmm. especially when it's in the judicial system. Absolutely. It's important to know how it's being used for, for employment. Mm -hmm. Because they use, they, remember, your, when you submit an application, it goes through AI to, to, to automatically okay. look for keywords right. and weed out applications. Right. So who's to say some of those keywords aren't Hampton or Howard or Morehouse or, you know what I mean? So it, it, you know, it's just how is it being used? How is it being used to score you credit-wise? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. China uses what they call social profiles. Didn't they have like a social uh, factor score? So which China has what they call a social they use social profiles. And so is that coming here? Is that being used secretly here in this country? You know what I mean? Is it being used to disclose, disclude African-Americans from credit or credit offers? And so I can, I, can, I can definitely tell you this. 
uh, one of the nefarious ways that it's being used. Remember, it's illegal to discriminate based on race, color, creed, religion, gender, sex, sexual orientation, all this stuff. Citibank, they want to send juicy credit offers to rich white folks. It's not illegal to do it by zip code. So they can send, they can get their local branches in Beverly Hills to send out special credit offers. We're going to give you a 3% offer. Even though right now it's 7% interest, we're going to charge you 3% interest for everybody in the zip code. And it's not illegal because they make an offer to everybody in that zip code, even though they know that everybody in that zip code is white, male, married. And, you know, so it, it, they're finding ways to get around and they're finding ways to use it nefariously. And that's what we need to guard against. So we will be well, that's right back. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a break to kind of take some of this in and we'll be right back with our final segment on AI and the black community.